Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Coach Jones, strength and conditioning coach and IFBB pro figure competitor coming at you from Vegas. It's Olympia weekend 2015. It's been an amazing weekend uh, helping out the Rad Roller team at the expo. And it's a trip because we sell um, these amazing tools for myofascial release. And as I was kind of people watching this weekend, I've, been, I've just been noticing how bad people's posture is. Um, a lot of rounded shoulders. I wouldn't say like really bad kyphosis, but but definitely the rounded shoulders and, and, and weak backs. Um, and it's across the board. It's, it's, it's older people. I saw it in younger people, middle-aged people. So there isn't really one specific demographic where it was the worst. It was kind of across the board. And so what I wanted to talk to you guys about is an exercise that's going to help with mid-back flexibility and activating those muscles that are going to help open you up, pull those shoulders back, puff that chest out. It's called scapular wall slides. Uh, I've done Instagram videos on them. That's only 15 seconds, so I wanted to do a, lo a little longer demonstration. I don't really have too much space here in the room to work with, but I'm going to use this wall right here, and that's all you need is a, is a nice wall. If, if you don't even have anything taller, uh, where I normally do this outside of our gym at the, at the college, we actually do this on a short wall because the brick wall, it's got this overhead thing where guys that are and girls that are too tall will end up not being able to get full range of motion. So I'm gonna show you how to do it standing up and how to do it seated if you don't have anything that's tall enough for some of your athletes or some of your clients. Now, typically in regards to how you set up, I have people be a foot distance away from the wall and not 12 inches, but literally the size of their foot. So they'll put their heel against the wall and then their front foot, that heel is gonna to touch the toe. And then they're gonna line both feet up with that front foot because I don't really have much space and I wanna make sure I get full range of motion. I'm gonna drop my hips a little bit lower, but in regards to distance away from the wall, it's as far as you need to be, the foot's distance away from the wall. In regards to your posture, you don't wanna have an anterior tilt. So you don't wanna have any kind of gap in the small of your back. So you wanna tuck the hips under, get a posterior tilt, fire your abs so your, so your core is engaged, and you wanna make sure your low back is on the wall the entire time. At least that's how I teach it. And next, what you wanna do is you wanna pull those shoulder blades back. It's amazing how many times you'll say, pull shoulder blades back and you'll see people just, they'll elevate, they'll shrug. So you don't wanna shrug, you wanna make sure that they're pulling back and not elevating. And that's ultimately what they're doing is pulling those shoulder blades back, squeezing the scapula together. And what you wanna do is you wanna have your elbows and your wrist against the wall. Now, if somebody doesn't have mid-back flexibility, this may be the furthest they can get their, their elbows and their wrists back to the wall. In an ideal world, they get more flexible and they're gonna be able to open up, puff that chest out, retract better, and get the wrist and the, um, the elbows on the wall. And even if they can just get their wrist first and then they can progress to the wrist, that's even better. So they're gonna retract, literally slide the elbows and the wrists up the wall until you lock out into a Y and you wanna stay squeezed shoulder blades squeeze back, and really you're just in a Y, a capital Y. I say lock out the elbows into a capital Y. Again, you're still retracted. Then as you're retracted, you're gonna slide those elbows and the wrists back down again, give me an extra squeeze, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, low back still on the wall. You're gonna lock out, sliding up, hold, come back down. One, 1,000, two, 1,000. And I usually have people do anywhere between a set of 10 to 12 to 15 or two sets of 10 or two sets of 12. Usually one set of 15 will have their mid backs on fire. Mine's burning right now and I only did about two or three reps. And if you wanna do it seated because you've got a wall that isn't, um, that isn't tall enough, you'll take a seat. And I like to coach it knees up, feet on the floor because if they're locked out, their legs are locked out, they may kind of be too far away from the wall so I'll say butt against the wall, back against the wall, same rules apply. You're going to retract and do the same motion. You're gonna slide up, lock out into a capital Y, slide the elbows back down, give me an extra squeeze. And at no point do you let go of that lock. You wanna stay retracted the entire time. If you're doing it right, or they're doing it right, they're gonna be making some weird faces. It's gonna be almost painful how much their mid back is cramping, but it's a good way to activate those muscles in the scapula that ultimately, um, those rotator cuff muscles that are going to help keep people's shoulders healthy and keep people's posture um, in check. And again, these are called scapular wall slides. So if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment box below. And also if you haven't copped my ebook, I got a great 
ebook on hip mobility uh, in regards to forward lean and how people's hip flexors are so tight, it causes them to kind of collapse during their squats. Uh, it's on my website, www.coachkimjones.com. If you're not following me on Instagram, it's at jones underscore strength. And I want to thank you all for checking in and I will see y'all next time.